Hi there, hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another video. Today we have Spencer Dinwiddie's first signature shoes with 361 degrees, priced at 100 bucks USD, and this is the DVD or SD what? Dinwini just got traded in the Kyrie trade, and now he's back again with the Brooklyn Nets. He's been sort of a pioneer in the sneaker game among NBA players. Uh, like him, and uh, Langston Galloway are the two players that created their own brands for hoop shoes. And I just think it's such a cool way to display your personality and passion on the court in a unique way. But anyways, now he's signed by 361 degrees, and now he has his first signature shoes with them. To make it easy, let's just call it the DVD one. So his last name, translated in Chinese, well in English too, is pronounced like DVD. Uh, so I'm assuming that's the name inspiration. It's kind of like Paul George. His name in Chinese sounds like pickle pepper. And Nike made a hot sauce pickle pepper colorway on the PG4. And it was a China exclusive release, I believe. 361 Degrees has had Aaron Gordon as their main signature athlete over the past few years. Now they're at the AG3. Um, I only have the AG1. I also remember like way back when they signed Kevin Love. Like I went back to China during the summer and saw his shoes in store. I was like, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, a lot of people didn't know that besides Kevin Love's Nike PEs. It's like you might only remember Kevin Garnett with N1 and Adidas, but Anta signed KG for a while too. All right, enough said. For only $100, how does the brand's newest product compare against other performance models out there? Let's get right into some details. That's the box that they come in. Pretty simple with some digital vibe to it. There's a SD logo in the center. I didn't know his nickname is the mayor. And yeah, the box is in a black color with some iridescent lines. Also a photo on the inside of the box lid. On the first look, this is a low top shoe. Spencer Dimini has been wearing low tops throughout his career, including ones from his own brand. Uh, this purple colorway is called Digital Currency with some touches of green color. Looks dope in my opinion. The pull tab is pretty unique. It's like two elastic strings tied together. No effect on the functionality though. So moving to the upper materials, I gotta be straightforward, this is just awful. You have some mesh underlays below the tongue, but other than that, it's mainly a hard knit material. This is really stiff in hand and does not conform to your feet nicely at all. While I was playing in them, it did cause some discomfort too, which I'll get into very soon. Basically, this material feels like the basket that my grandma used to bring in the grocery shop in. The missile features their Energy X technology. It's a responsive setup and average amount of padding around the collar. Looking at the also, it has a pretty complicated multi-directional traction pattern with some herringbone. You can also see part of the midfoot TPU plate. If you're thinking about using these outdoors, they should be fine. And they're right around average weight, 416 grams for size 10 and a half. About the same weight as a Nike KD15, to give you a reference. As to how the DVD-1 performs on the court, the cushioning feels pretty good on feet. This missile is very responsive. You get a nice rebound back, good transition from front to back, and a highlight would be the amount of compression in the heel. A compared to shoes like the LeBron 20, which also has a nice compression, this one has more of like a springy effect rather than being soft. So this aspect is great for its price with that responsiveness from Energy X. The traction is also fantastic. This rubber has a very strong grip on the floor and is also very loud and squeaky in the indoor gym. They work really well on both clean and dusty courts and I've had zero issues with this also. With the fit, these are true to size. Whatever you normally wear in most Nike sneakers, let's say, that's exactly what I would recommend. About average width too and no heel slippage. But coming back to the materials, Almost every time I jump, lift my feet up in an upward or forward motion, I could feel the upper pressing down on my feet. Specifically, it's pretty uncomfortable around the midfoot area, closer to where the first two eyelids are at the front. It's super stiff, but still not to a point where it bothered me so much that I couldn't play in them. It's just kind of annoying. So if you have high volume feet, I think it's best to avoid these. I don't even have a high instep, and I had that problem quite a bit. I got these in around mid-January, and uh, been wearing them quite a lot, but that feeling never went away because this material just does not break in over time. Other than that, stability and support are decent. I guess that problem also makes the upper secure and rigid enough. Keep in mind that this is a $100 shoe. For this price, it does come with very impressive cushion and traction. Overall, I think the DVD or SD1 is still a solid shoe at its price point. 
uh, just that the comfort level and materials really aren't that good. As a quick summary, it's got excellent traction. You get a nice compression in the heel. I just wish the upper is not as stiff. I mean, this can hurt. If I was to compare them against some of the other hoop shoes I can think of, right at the $100 price range, no, I don't think they're better than the Air Max Impact 4, not better than the Ice Blood V2, Dame Certified, Lockdown 6, or any of those top budget shoes. I probably would take these over the LeBron Witness 7 though. Uh, there are some similarities between the two actually. Anyways, any other shoe that you'd like to see a video on, please let me know in the comment section. Honestly, sometimes I get more excited to try shoes like this uh, compared to like big Nike signature releases. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.